G'day folks. Well, the in input from the uh, comments as well as a couple of friends I spoke to today uh, was pretty invaluable. I mean, it sort of summed up what I was thinking. This thing is a bit too old to be messing around with for a, um, a network. Uh, it could be made to work, but to be honest, I don't really have time to mess around with something this old. Um, if it was really going to be a good investment, sure, but I had no idea it was. it's like 12 years old or something. I thought it was something a little more. Well, I should have realised by the CPU, but I should have realised not just the uh, hardware is old, but just the um, the interface speed and everything like that. So I'm going to dismantle it, and you can see what's inside it. I mean, there really isn't much specific apart from this board. This is what it boots off the flash board. So that's important to the firewall as well as the uh, floppy disk drive and the, the um, floppy disk. That's about it. Everything else is basically the same hardware you'd find in any other PC of this era. So what I'll do is I'll keep the uh, floppy disk drive and its disk and the uh, flash card together and when I've got a bit of money to do a giveaway I might uh, see if anybody wants it. But apart from that I think I'll keep the uh, Intel network cards, they're always handy. Even though they're old uh, PCI ones, they're, they're worth hanging on to still because they're 100 megabit. Uh, they're not gigabit. If I could go for a, a um, gigabit network, I will. But I need a, a uh, router and suitable stuff for it. And I'll probably have to rerun my cable as well. I think CAT6 is the next one, the green cable, which will um, it's probably optimised or recommended for gigabit. I'm guessing uh, CAT5 will work just fine. It'll probably not 100% optimal, but... We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, I'll uh, try and get this apart. I think I have to take the faceplate off before I can take the drive out. It's an awkward design, but it works. And if Jay wants the case back, well, he can let me know. The power supply itself is... It's an ATX supply, but again, I wouldn't worry about using this. I'd throw a, uh, a much better power supply in it if I was building a media PC or something. And also probably add some more fanage. Because right now there's one fan and the power supply fan doing all the work and that's not really enough for my liking. Right, in case you're wondering what I would do for a firewall, um, I've got a couple of uh, good working Pentium 4 IBM Think Center uh, towers, full size BTX towers. And since they're BTX I'm very limited in what kind of board I can throw in them so I'm uh, it's probably good that I kept them because I could use one of, the, one of those or make a really good one out of the two to um, run as a proper firewall as well because essentially all I'm doing is just running newer hardware with a couple of gigabit um, network cards in it and the um, program that people have been recommending can't remember the name of it and that should do the job just fine it'd be a lot better than this outdated technology plus I won't have to worry about setting up a rack mount which I don't have any, I don't have any other rack mounted equipment so this is kind of pointless and the server I'm getting is um, also a tower, so they can stand side by side in the back room. Anyway, onward with the autopsy. Okay, well the Pentium 2 CPU is a 350 with uh, 512 uh, megabytes of, uh, sorry, 512k of um, cache. Pretty good. Well, for a Pentium 2 anyway. I remember when they came out like a two, 266 or something, I think it was, 300 onwards. Um, what did the Pentium 2 go up to? It might have even gone up to 4, 450 or something, or was that Pentium start of the Pentium 3s? I can't really remember now. Um, oh, power connectors. Oh, a lot of stuff's been removed or omitted from this board. All the audio and the um, might have even been onboard LAN or something omitted from it. Or yeah, there's the audio headers. There's DAP chip and everything in there, so it's had a it's a lower revision anyway. But that's a pretty basic board. Might even leave the thing in there if there's no real need to pull it out. Would be a neat little souvenir, but really, apart from gathering dust, I don't think it's going to do anything. Let's have a look at this power supply. See what brand of power supply they used. Well, that's about all they're running. Nothing special. Very basic 250 watt power supply. Uh, it seems to have done the job though over the years. It doesn't look like it's been replaced. But as for the rest of it, well, I, don't know, I might take the board out. 
would be kind of cool to have. I know someone's asking to see it boot up, but I had a look through my AGP cards, and that must be like an old four time slot because mine all have the um, cutout. Or they don't have a cutout here, they got it back here. I can't remember what type that is, but this is an early one, older one. The later, all the cards I have are later, so I can't even plug an AGP card into it. I know I've got a PCI card on that server over there, but I don't have time. So, yeah. Better just get this thing out of the way. I'll pull the board, keep the board for now. The rest of it, well, there isn't really much else useful in it, but I think Jay wants the case back so he can have that. You know, the old power supply with it. I'll just leave all the screws and things in it and uh, close it back up. lost count of how many of them I've thrown out over the years. I know they'll become a commodity, along with the drives I guess, and put it together. But of course new main boards don't have IDE and they don't have floppy drive connectors on them, so what do you do? <laughs> Real redundancy.